Hey, Pittsburgh. If you like walking or running and you love wine, then you don't want to miss the 5K Run Walk at Stone Villa Winery on April 27th. This event is open to all ages and those over 21 will get a souvenir wine glass and pour of wine on race day. Plus, you'll be supporting the Nicholas Ritchell Foundation, which grants wishes to young adults and their families battling cancer. Sign up at wine5k.com slash citycast and use the code city, that's C-I-T-Y, to get 15% off the registration cost this week only. Rain or shine, there will be wine on April 27th. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, if you polled a bunch of Pittsburghers and asked who's the most beloved person in our city, it's safe to say that Rick Seaback would show up somewhere on the short list. He's known for his TV documentaries on WQED, and now he's dipping his toes into audio with a podcast, Gum Bands. Today on the show, we're throwing it back to a fun conversation we had with Rick last year about how he got started in filmmaking, his favorite local haunts, and the one Pittsburgh story he's still dying to tell. It's Tuesday, March 19th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm with a fella almost every single Pittsburgher would recognize in person, on TV, um, and now even via audio. Rick Seaback, I am so honored to talk to you. I am honored to be here. Uh, Can I show you something? Yes, of course. Uh, So I had been in Pittsburgh for just a couple of months, and a friend of mine was at the Allegheny Elks Lodge. You know it well, I think. (laughs) Yes. Um, And she shouted into my ear and said, that's Rick. We have to go meet him. And I had (laughs) no idea what she was talking about. But this is one of the very first photos of me taken in the city of Pittsburgh. Wow. (laughs) And I, I don't have my glasses on. Is there a date on it? It is from September of 2013. 23 it's 10 mm-hmm. years ago 10 years ago excellent what is it like to be so beloved that people run at you from across the room to take <laughs> photos that you've never met well it doesn't happen that often <laughs> but i mean and, and i want to knock on wood uh i've never had a bad experience you know uh and i i, mean, I think i'm very lucky that way so you know i i i am honored um and I just always feel like I'm the luckiest guy to have found this job 36 years ago. Congratulations. And that's, what it, a milestone. I just, I, I never mind people coming up to me. And it's funny, I always say, you know, people will say, can I take a picture? Mm-hmm. And I say, I live by the Fred Rogers rule. Fred Rogers said, you never say no to a photo. Really? Yes. Now, he did not live into the age of the cell phones <laughs> when everybody was taking pictures the, the all the time. The easy selfie, yeah. Right. But I remember people didn't, people weren't crazy about taking him to the airport because everybody at the airport had a camera yeah. back in the day. And so people would say, can I take your picture? And that was because he, as a young man in Paris, saw a famous movie actress and everyone was taking her picture and he thought, I should ask her permission. And so he said, would you mind if I took your picture? And she said, I'd rather you not. <laughs> and he said he felt so small, he just made Aww. a promise to himself. If anyone ever asks for my photo, I will say yes. Well, do you have the ultimate Pittsburgh WQED picture, you and Fred Rogers? Just a very a blurry, out-of-focus one. Because we both worked on the second floor of WQED and, uh, you know, he was always there. It was the kind of thing that you didn't really do. You don't take pictures of your coworkers that often. Exactly. No, you are totally right. Yes. You spend all this time with them. You make so many memories, and then you don't think to pick up the camera. I. You couldn't be wiser, yes. <laughs> Well, I want to talk about some of those 36 years. Um, you know, I feel like so many of us got to know you by watching your documentaries on WQED. You've chronicled so many pieces of Pittsburgh's present and past. Um, was there anything that you, you know, just you look back on and you're like, you, you just still miss it or you're still so proud of it? Um, favorites from those years? No, because they're like my children. 
you know, I, I don't have any children, but uh, yeah, I, I, it's hard to say my favorites. Um, but if someone like twisted my arm, I would say that my most favorite things that I've done, I think, are hot dogs and sandwiches. I did a Because sh- you got to try them all. No, because for the first time then, I had enough programs under my belt, I think, when we started to do them, that QED allowed me to pick my crew. Usually I was assigned a crew. Oh, wow. That's so important to be yes. able to, you know, work you with know. people that you trust and appreciate and, 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 and have love. fun with. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean... And if you're going to eat hot dogs all day, no you really want to like them. And, and television is such a t- totally... Uh, you know, collaborative art. Um, I get a lot of the credit, but, you know, I rarely touch the camera. So it's just really, uh, you know, a time when you want to be with people that you want to work with. Yeah. And sometimes we weren't. And, you know, but since then, it's been great. Uh, And that's quite a while ago. So. Yeah. Do you have any white whales, um, you know, things that you wanted to try to do here in Pittsburgh that maybe you haven't yet gotten the chance to do? Well, I... Um, I'll tell you that I, yeah, I've always wanted to do a show about Pittsburgh cemeteries. Um, and one time I was at PBS and they asked me that question, is there a show you've always wanted to make? And I said, well, I'd like to do Pittsburgh cemeteries. And they said, ooh, we don't want Pittsburgh cemeteries, but we take national cemeteries. So I did a show called The Cemetery Special. Um, and, but I just think that people want to know about the cemeteries near them. Yeah. Rather than across the country. It was great fun. And I learned massive amounts about cemeteries and you know, uh, traditions. What uh, what Pittsburgh Cemetery are you most excited to to focus on? Are there any that you really love? Uh, I would probably, we have one in, we have Allegheny Cemetery in that national show because oh, I think good. that's- Oh, good. I'm glad you got a, snuck a Pittsburgh one in there. Oh, yeah. We always, oh. <laughs> <laughs> PBS said, we know that you would do the, every story about Pittsburgh if you could. Um, but- uh, Allegheny is uh, one of the first places in America that actually called itself a cemetery. I don't know if you have, that started in Boston. The word cemetery, cimetière from the French. Um, before that, they were just called burial grounds or churchyards. Yeah. I forget which show that is. Let me think. It's maybe it's like 25 things I like about Pittsburgh. Andy Warhol's Buried in Bethel Park. I love that. Yeah. I, I grew up in Bethel Park. <laughs> and when I came for my job interview in 1987... Andy Warhol had just passed away. And I remember it was my younger brother who said, they buried Andy Warhol here in Bethel Park. I said, no, they didn't. <laughs> he goes, yes, they did. And so I went and uh, I have pictures of me lying next to his fresh grave. Um, no, no marker yet, but my brother knew where it was. So. That's, that was one of your first acts as a newly christened Pittsburgher. Well, I, I grew up here. So you know, I was returning or I was returning for a job interview at that point. I didn't have the job or anything. You didn't even have the job yet? No, I came for an interview. And, <laughs> and you know, I went to Mallory, see did you lie next to Andy Warhol's grave when you came back? <laughs> I can't say that I did, no. <laughs> so, um, you know, but the, yeah, the, and there are little cemeteries all around that are always interesting. So, you know, I'd be happy still to do that show. Okay, you heard it here. Somebody make that happen for Rick. This one's for my parents out there. If you've got a kiddo ready for grades 9 through 12, City Charter High School is looking for you. They're hosting a new admissions open house on March 23rd from 10 a.m. to noon, where parents and prospective students can tour the school, check out classrooms, talk with teachers and student ambassadors, and apply all right there in person. City High has been educating in the heart of downtown for over 20 years. Weekly schedules run Tuesday to Friday year-round and educators stay with the same students all four years. Plus, there's no tuition. All City High graduates complete college and career planning classes, a 13-week mentored internship, and get real-world experience with research, writing, problem-solving, and decision-making. And I kind of wish I'd learned this part sooner, even the art of presentation. If you want your youngin to finish 12th grade with a resume, job training, and networking experience, consider City Charter High School. Visit cityhigh.org for more information or to apply apply today. So you've got a new product now for WQED. Um, it's a podcast called Gum Bands. Um, I think 
the audio world exclusively is a new medium for you. Is that right? Right. You've yes. been a guest many, many times. Right. And, and I love that. I, I, love, I love the casualness of a podcast. Um, and I love the fact that sometimes it can go way off topic. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty good at that around here, too. Uh, where did you come up with the name, Gump Ants? Uh, uh, I don't, you know, it was just there. Um, <laughs> I mean, the Pittsburghese uh, you needed in the moment. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, I guess it's almost close to five years ago. We did a series of eight programs called Nebby. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the f playing with that word Nebby. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not crazy about all Pittsburgh words, but I, I like gum bands a lot. You like gum bands. You like Nebby. What else do you like? Uh... I'm not, I don't know if there's another short list. Do you like being verbs? Do you like oh the, the to be dropping to be? Dropping I to love be. that. It's very efficient. I love it. Okay, so you were aware of it as a Tennessean. Well, I noticed it pretty quickly upon moving here that oh, you guys don't say that. And at first, I thought it was a little odd, and it kind of irked the grammarian in me. Um, but now I love it. I I say it unironically without trying. <laughs> yeah, this room needs red up. Yeah. Yeah, the car needs washed. It just makes sense. <laughs> it does. I mean, to think, you know, that we're supposed to be saying this car needs washing just sounds funny to Pittsburgh. But it's not the, yeah, it just doesn't feel right. And actually, I didn't know about that one until, well, I mean, I graduated from college. I got my first job in South Carolina. I worked there for 11 years. Then I answered an ad in a trade journal and got this job back here. And I was working on a script at WQED. My boss said, you have a Pittsburghism in your script. And I said, what? And she said, this right here. I said, that sounds fine. And it was <laughs> dropping the verb to be. So you had worked in TV for 11 years outside the city of Pittsburgh and nobody called you on it? No, it was, no, I, maybe I never used it, but I, you know, it was just something that came naturally to me. I mean... Maybe people noticed and thought, like, what's wrong with that guy? Um, <laughs> no one taught him how to talk. Right. But, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I still like it. I like that, yes, the efficiency of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to acknowledge the fact that the, the, the whole idea of the podcast came from my co-producer, Rich Capaldi. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate how many folks you name drop in, in your production staff. It's really important, having worked as a producer, to give credit where it's due. Totally, totally. Yeah, uh, Rich Capaldi said uh, WQED TV, radio has a podcast. WQED FM, all classical all the time, 50 yeah. years old this year. I know. Um, they have a podcast, but QED TV did not have a podcast. And he said, if you do it with me, We'll get this done. And so uh, that's how it started. And I mean, really quickly, maybe like the same day I said, we'll call it gum bands. I just like the idea of gum bands holding everything together. Um, in fact, I brought you a present. You did? Yeah. We love presents. <gasps> a gum band ball. My own gum band ball? I'm so excited. I, I just like, you know, I love the Pittsburghism of it. I love the image of it. Um, and I, I've been, you know, I think since very early on, I've been saying holding Pittsburgh together, gum bands. Um, but, uh, you know, someone else said to me, oh, stretching the truth, <laughs> which I like. <laughs> That's and, very clever. I like and then when we were doing the promos, I thought, oh, I, I want this show to be snappy. <laughs> and so, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. But That is very fun. Um, you know, something we've been talking about here at CityCast Pittsburgh, um, kind of along this line of milestones, is what it is that makes a Pittsburgher a true Pittsburgher. Um, so, you know, there was a joke on the team here for a while that you had to be here for at least 10 years and then have to go through some kind of naturalization ceremony. Like, if you were not lucky enough to be born a Pittsburgher, what might you have to do? Um, I am now celebrating 10 years here in the city. Uh, so I've reached number one. I'm curious what you think. What are the rites of passage? Passage, maybe that a non-naturalized Pittsburgher must achieve to be able to call themselves one of you. Wow, that is a really good question. Um, just based on my wanderings this morning, you have to have a, uh, a breaded oyster at the oyster house. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, immediately I think of food. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> the food ones are fun to check off the list. That's a good bingo card. Yes. Um, I like people to get up to Troy Hill. You know, if someone mm -hmm. comes to town, I like to take them to Troy Hill and uh, see uh, the relics. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. In the, the I know the cemetery. No, there, uh, well, uh, there's the church, 
And then next to the church, there's a small chapel that has the world's largest collection of holy relics. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I uh, haven't done that one yet. It's on my short list. Yeah. Um, I have climbed Rialto, which I think is worth a few bonus points. That's worth a lot of bonus <laughs> points. Yes. Boy, what else do you have to do to become a Pittsburgher? Wander across a bridge on foot. Okay. Um, With a destination in mind or just for fun? Uh, and it could be just for fun. Um, you have to go to Rachel Carson's house. You know, it's still there where she grew up. Where is that? It's in Springdale. Can uh, I show you our list? Yes, yes. And maybe that'll give me some other ideas. So sit behind home plate at a Pirates game. Okay. Um, eat fries on a salad. Some of these are quite easy, but... Eat fries on a salad. Yeah, you know, like I think that's faded a bit. Or maybe I've just been going to the wrong places. But uh, I remember uh, my uh, associate producer, Nancy uh, Jean Coates, um, now Coates Greenwood, when she left Pittsburgh, she, I think she went to D.C. and she said she was in a thing. And the guy said, you know, she said, I'll have a salad and, and no French fries. And the guy went, it's a salad. You know, <laughs> there are no French fries on the salad. She goes, I'm sorry, I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, making or taking, depending on your interpretation, a Pittsburgh left. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just, I mean, that's just sort of kindness. Yeah. You well, do you think you make a Pittsburgh left or do you like, do you give a Pittsburgh left or do you take a Pittsburgh left? Uh, you can do both. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you can just be bold and cut in front of the other line or sometimes you'll get a wave. Um, and either one is good. Uh, we had a few uh, nefarious ones like um, feel too old to be out after dark in the south side. Uh, that's pretty easy. I think. <laughs> it is for us. <laughs> it is for me. Get pooped on at the National Aviary. Ah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, give directions based on what used to be there. I feel like you would be especially good at that one. I can do that, yeah, especially where the Isleys used to be. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about that, actually. Um, write a funicular for practical transportation. That is so funny that you would call it a funicular because someone said, you know, you can't be from Pittsburgh and call that a funicular. <laughs> Although that is the real term for it. We just have always called them inclines. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. I'm um, fine with it. Um, and that one is a crucial one. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, when I was in high school, I was a foreign exchange student to Rio de Janeiro. And I lived with a family. And the, my uh, Brazilian brothers, Edu and Kiko, Edu was my age and Kiko was a little bit younger. Um, they had never been to the Christ statue. <laughs> oh, wow. And they took me like the last day I was there, you know. And they but it was new to them too. It was new to them too. And then when he came and lived with my family here, Edu, and that's the first time I went on the incline. Because, you know, I'd grown up here. Sometimes when you grow up here, you don't bother with those things. You know they're there. But, you know, who cares? It's so easy to forget that stuff. Um, but uh, when I came back, I just realized, oh, my God, this city has such great texture and history mm -hmm. and, you know, unusual traditions and, you know, just so distinctive uh, an aura um, that you don't always find in a city, I, you know. Not to make anyone mad, but I always say, if you really want to love Pittsburgh, go spend a couple of days in Houston or Dallas. <laughs> oh, sorry, CityCast Houston. <laughs> um, well, we are very glad that you did come back 36 years ago. Yes. Uh, me too. I, you know, how could I complain? Well, I definitely can't complain. Uh, and you'll have to let us know if there's anything else that, I don't know, comes to mind for you for this whole Pittsburgh rites of passage conversation. I, I, I'm just fascinated by the idea that you think there should be a ceremony that you know makes you a Pittsburgher. That's really good. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's a good city, you know, and uh, uh, there has lots of problems, but everywhere <laughs> does. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm happy to celebrate it and to, uh, you know, keep trying to make it maybe a little better. Thank you so much, Rick, for talking to us on CityCast Pittsburgh. I hope this wasn't too long. No, it was great. It was so much fun. Excellent. No, thank you. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're liking the show, please tell someone, rate us, leave us a nice review, and of course, make sure you're subscribed to our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon.
no one can love a national show the way Pittsburghers love a Pittsburgh show. Um, and so I love the Pittsburgh shows probably the best. 